Yes, he does. He feeds us and gives us what we need. Yes. Without further ado. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I say again that, that we're not here in order to get saved. We're not here to get saved. God does saving. Um, I got saved Easter Day in 1980. And I just looked that up today, Tango, just to see what was the date. And I looked up Easter in 1980, and it was April the 6th, mm. April the 6th of 1980. Mm. And uh, it, was, it, it was before a sermon was preached. Mm -hmm. It was before any kind of altar call was made. Yeah. It was all God. Yeah. And salvation is, uh, is all God. And when we begin to put our uh, hand in it, yeah. and even more importantly, when we start allowing other people to convince us that they had some part, or even today have some part in our relationship with God, then it gets corrupted. Yeah. It gets corrupted. Uh, I have enjoyed and am enjoying these 18 years. Is this coming up on 18? 18 years that we're coming up on February the 9th. Yeah. I always get that mixed up. I don't know if it's 9th or 8th, but February the 9th is our anniversary, the first service. But I've enjoyed, I have. Uh, these years uh, because it wasn't enjoyable. It wasn't enjoyable. You kept me too long. You focused too much on money. And I know today why that was. We've been talking about how that every human being uh, is, has a body. And within that body is a soul and a spirit, the invisible part. The soul, Lady Deborah, is your mind, your will, and emotion. They can do as many autopsies as they want to. They will not find your mind, your will, nor your emotion, but it's real. Just because you can't see something don't mean it's not real. Don't, only, don't mean it's not real. You have a mind because your mind is what, and, it, and it's amazing to watch little children mind uh, develop. But they begin to start talking, and you begin, they begin to start understanding, uh, and they begin to start responding. That's their mind. The mind, and the mind is a terrible thing to waste. But the problem with that is, is that evil people want to manipulate you. And in order to manipulate you, they have to get your mind. They have to get your mind. Then you have a will, and your will, each one of us have a will. We decide, you know, what we're going to do. It was your will to come tonight. If it was your will not to come, you wouldn't have been here. And then emotion. I could be driving along just fine, talking on the phone, everything, you know. And then all of a sudden, I can't see. See, women see things men don't see. I, you, ever been with your, you ever been with your wife or something like that, and, and you just driving everything, and they'll tell you, say, you passed the man right down there. Right? You make that law, Lord, have mercy to you. I didn't know he was sitting right over there. You just driving along. I think the other day, I was uh, Greenwood. I was leaving Greenville, going to Greenwood, and and uh, look behind me. There, the lights on. You know, and and your whole, you have some kind of emotion that come on you. you just just change your whole day, especially if you think you're gonna get a ticket, yeah. and especially if you already got tickets. And <laughs> you, I ain't got no money to be paying these for. You come, you just you know, you just go on to let your pride down. Just go to bed again. I just told the master, man, look, I'm wrong. I'm just wrong. I'm just wrong. So we, mind, you, 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 your mind, your will, and your emotion are real. But they are in the invisible part of our life. But there's a part who know, that knows God. There's a part that God reserves unto himself. And when we come here, Cricket, we come here spiritually dead. Come here spiritually dead. And you can see it all around you. When people have no kind of consideration, no kind of thoughts, no kind of regard for the things of God. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians second chapter, 14 verse, he says the natural man, that's the, un, uh, the, the, the man who God has not quickened that spirit. The natural man receiveth not the things of God. You see? And that's the reason pastoring has always been easy to me. Because if, if a, this, you trying to wake a dead person up, 
It's not going to happen. You can do them like they do in prison. You, because you're in prison and because of, because of uh, the fear of retribution, you can get them to act like they're acting all right, but it ain't in them. Whatever's in you, sooner or later, it's going gonna, gonna to come out. And so then God quickens. God causes you to be alive. God gives you the faith to believe, and that faith, uh, 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 he quickens you or uh, makes you alive. And all of a sudden now, it's like a person who was blind, but now you see things you just didn't see. Another reason, uh, so Cynthia, that passing has always been easy for me is because ain't no use trying to make somebody see. They don't see. They just, they just don't. They, I, I don't mean you no harm, but I just don't see it. I just don't see it. But when you see, then you know it's a different. And that's the reason Valentine Jr. sometimes we'll say as we get older, say, you know what, if I knew then, if I knew then, what I know, I wouldn't act like that then. That was so ugly. That, 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 I, shouldn't, I didn't even have that to do. But I couldn't see it at the time. But the thing about it is, is that real life is right here in the spirit. Give me 1 Corinthians, uh, the first chapter. Uh, I don't know. Real life is there. And that's what we're here for tonight, y'all. We're here to, to tap in yeah. to, to, to real life. To, to, to real life. It's available for you. It's available. And it's my job. The Bible said that God gave some uh, uh, prophets and apostles. And, and the prophets and apostles are not needed anymore. The apostles were the foundation. There was no Bible. So then uh, God had to have people who what they spoke was speaking from him. They didn't, wasn't no Bible. They, what, they couldn't have error. What they said, they came directly from God because there was no New Testament. There was no, uh, 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 the, the epistles of Paul were not complete. The New Testament wasn't complete. So they were the apostles. And the apostles gave them, uh, they spoke directly for God. They were the foundation of the church. And then you had the prophets. Um, but then you had pastors and teachers and evangelists and the pastors, and it was for the edifying of the saints. The reason that church didn't satisfy me was it didn't edify me. It didn't edify me. I don't have to have people around me patting me on my back all the time. I do not have to have people around me all the time telling me how great I am. I don't have, I tell y'all all the time, I get more out of criticism than I get out of praise because it's more true. I can find more truth in you criticizing me than in the pray in the praise. I, I I don't have that's weak. It's weak when you got to, when folk got to always lift you up and talk about how great you are. That's ego. But on the other side, Sister Betty Brown, I'm not gonna stay around negative people. I'm not gonna stay around people that every time that 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 I come around you, everything that's going on in my life is look. Yeah, I seen that little house you had over there. I seen. Slick Hayden. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I, I can't live. I'm, I'm not anybody's doormat for you, for you just want to. Just, you. And sometimes you shine too much for people. Sometimes it look like you're doing too well. And so they feel obligated to kind of put, uh, put a pin in and kind of take some of the air out, uh, out of you and everything. Those kind of folks right there, I got enough sense not to be around you. I got enough sense to leave you alone, let you be. Because I believe that you can, you, you can make it without anybody. Yeah. Ain't nobody so important. And certainly, if they can do without you, you ought to be able to do without them. That's just, that's just good con. That's just good walking around sense. And so we're here in order to have, he said that he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Just because I'm 66 years old, that don't mean I have to look like I'm 66. Yeah. It doesn't. God can keep you alive and vibrant, and, and, and he, he, he can, he is able to make the foolish wise, and I'm going to show you how he does it. That's my job, is to show you how, how this works. It's real, y'all. It's real. Uh, go down to the last uh, verses in, in, in that chapter for me, please. Uh, hold, hold on. Uh, Go back up to maybe 20. 
No, no, no. Go down. Go down. I'm sorry. I see it now. Here in verse 27, you see, you don't find God. God finds you. Yeah. Because you're the one that's lost. Okay? And you're hid. The grace of God can't find you. Okay? In, 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 up under the Old Testament, you would come boldly to the throne of God. In Hebrews, in, 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 uh, you would come boldly to find grace. But, but uh, up under the dispensation of grace, grace will find you. And he finds you when all of your confidence is gone in you. You see, nobody, Vandal Jr., seeks this kind of life here. See, this life right here, the spiritual life, the spiritual life is like the tabernacle that was in the wilderness. When God told Moses, he gave him the design to make the tabernacle. He said, this is where I'm going to uh, dwell among you. I'm going to dwell in this tabernacle. Now, Lady Deborah, the outside of the tabernacle, he said, make it with badger skin. It don't make no sense. It's so drab. It's so, 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 so plain. It's just like with Jesus, when Isaiah said, when you look upon him, say it's not going to be anything that would make you desire him. You, you, you see, if you ever going to know God, you're going to have to press your way. You're going to have to press your way. It's not going to be anything that look like anything that you desire. As a matter of fact, around the tabernacle, about 10 feet tall, uh, Brother Span, was some curtains. See, because... Nosy folks look over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nosy folks just, they, they, they just want to know. They ain't going to do nothing, ain't going to help nothing, ain't going to participate in nothing. They just want to know. So he, he said, I want you to put these curtains up here right here. So keep the nosy folks out. Okay? And then the badger skin was for the folks that's looking for excitement. This right here ain't for everybody. This ain't for everybody because I, I said many times about a certain person. I said, well, no, they, not, they won't be back because it, we ain't got a big enough stage for them. <laughs> you, you, you got to be lifted up. You got, we got to give you a title. We got to ordain you. We got to give you a piece of paper. We, we got to talk about how you, ooh, you growing in the Lord. Ooh, you this right. But, but you see, all of that has to be emptied from if you want this life that I'm talking about. You see, in order to get something, you got to let something go. Get something go. I made a post this afternoon that said that January 7, 1989, God delivered me from crack cocaine. And even though I had a criminal record, I had a grade point average of 1.99. By 1993, I had passed two bar exams. You got to let something go in order to get something better. You can't hold on. You, what you're trying to hold on to, you got to let that go. This right here, this area right here, broad is the way that lead to destruction. And many there be that enter therein. The world loves this area right here, the mind. They love the folks that's got the PhD and the DD and the JD and all this stuff right here behind them. And they got, they got, they, I know in the Wizard of Oz, the guy said, oh, if I had a brain and everything, they just gave him a diploma. He said, they ain't got no more sense than you got. They just got a diploma. <laughs> we love folks like that. And, and then, Pratt, for you to say that, uh, uh, you know what, uh, I don't smoke no more. I don't smoke cigarettes no more. And, 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 and they asked you, they said, well, how you do it? I said, well, you know, the, the, uh, Grace found me, man. The Lord just delivered. He took it out. I don't, I don't, I don't want it no more. They don't like that. That, that, that answer, that don't sound good. Well, man, I just made up my mind. I just made up my mind. I can stop anything, man, if I want to. See, we, we, we respect that. Look what he did. He pulled himself up by his home bootstraps. Look what I did. Look what I've made. Look what I've done. They don't want to give God the glory. They don't want to say I couldn't help myself. I had the couldn't help it. 
When I said I, what I said I wasn't going to do, I found myself doing it. But the grace of God came in. Yeah. Ah, and he took the love for the cheese so I don't have to worry about the trap. Because it ain't the trap that get the rat. It's the love for the cheese. Because as long as you love the cheese, your mind going to keep telling you, I can figure out a way to get in there and get that cheese and I won't get caught. And you keep getting caught every time. But when you don't want it no more, you can walk by and say, you know what? The cheese is for somebody else. It ain't for me because that ain't what I do. That's not what I do. That's what grace does for you. Uh, grace takes the sugar out of it where it's not even appealing to you anymore. So then this escaping out of this realm, and that's the reason that Paul was so adamant to the church in Galatia. He said, why? <laughs> See, in order to get saved, you've got to get past having confidence in yourself and realize that if the Lord don't help me, yeah. I ain't going to make it. Uh -uh. I can't live good enough. I, I, I keep messing up. I'm, 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 I, can't, I, I can't get this thing right. And so therefore, I'm going to have to fully trust and rely upon the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary as my only hope of bringing me back in the right relationship with God. And when you do that, when you no longer have any confidence in yourself, then 1 Corinthians 12 chapter says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into the body of Christ. And so now you are a member of the body of Christ. You see? Give me uh, 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 Galatians 3. Galatians 3. You see? This, this, this right here is, is, is like taking your car in. You got a beautiful car, but it just need an alignment. It drives good as long as you're holding it like this right here. Whatever. Take your hands off of it and you watch it. It's pulling over that way. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know what? And, 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 and Vanna Jr., it's the same way when we neglect our spiritual growth. Uh, uh, it looked like we're doing well because we're doing better than the folks we're around. You see? He asked him, he said, you foolish Galatians. Who have I be with you? You got past this area right here. But you see, this is where most of the churches are operating in, right here in the mind, will, and emotion. That's why they got so many programs. What you need a program for? And you got this, hey, glory to God. You got the spirit of the living God living inside of you. You ain't, you ain't calling no shots no more. You, don't you know that you've been bought with a price? You are no longer your own. You see, when you're your own, man, you call the shots. Huh? i give you a good example. I'm just as gracious as I, as I can be till I get down there on 241 North 4th Street. My eyes going to get wide when you start trying to call shots down there. I'm looking at you. You, you lost your mind, ain't you? I don't, I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what you drove up in. I don't care how much sense you bought to have. Your sense ain't no good here. You see? He purchased us with his blood. And so therefore, now we are to be led by the spirit of God. Not by this area right here. That's reading that the pastor got to have so many degrees and we can, we getting him from such and such and such and such and we going to elect and we sit down with the board and we going to elect. We, we going to, you ain't got no sense to put socks together. But you finna, you finna elect a pastor. Because I'm operating out of this area which is a detriment to me because the things of God are foolishness in here. It's foolishness. Now, we don't mind a form of fashion. Oh, we got a form of fashion. We got, we, got, we got little angels coming down from the sky, and we can open up the, the, the curtain. When you open up the curtains, you, you, you got a hundred choir row and the robes and everything. We've been fighting and cussing about the robe, but when, when you let it down, we all together. We sing it about who going to lead the song. And, but the Spirit of God. Because remember what the Bible says, that I have not seen. 
ear have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the good thing that the Lord hath prepared yeah. for them that love him. He said, but God have revealed them. Un this is 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. But God have revealed. <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them, I'm on the right road now. You see, all I needed you to do, all I needed you to do, Pastor, was explain this to me. Yeah. Explain to me why it's bad, man, when you trying, you trying and ain't getting nowhere. If you ain't trying, you don't expect it. You ain't. I know, I know, you know, we, boy, I'm telling you what, we used to have a lot of fun in school. Because you talk, we call it Jonah. You talking about Jonah and talking about folks, boy, we had a good time. And then we had a dude that came up, man. He got a zero on his, on, on his paper and everything. Man, you could have stayed at home. Man. I don't know what you even took the test for. If you ain't doing nothing, you don't expect nothing. Yeah. But when you love the Lord, yeah. you love him. And you putting forth all your efforts. You come into church. You paying your money. You, you're doing all this right here. But you yet know that you're not. You're not. It, it's, it's just not clicking. And the reason is, is that you got me in this soulish area. This is how you deal with me. I'll give you a good example. The mind, the will, and the emotion. Ain't nothing spiritual about it. That as long as I'm doing what you want me to do, as long as I'm running behind the pastor and doing what he want me to do and everything, then I'm fine. But the day that I disagree with anything that you come up with, you or your wife or your mama come up with, you ain't got to say nothing. I can just tell you how you act different. You ain't got to say nothing. I can just tell you how you, you know, how you start acting. And that's the reason that, you know, you got me right here. But in the spirit, when you are dealing with me out of the spirit, then Galatians 5 and 22 talks about the fruit of the spirit. And it starts off, it said the fruit of the spirit is love. And love, my definition, cricket, is, is you before me. And if you operating in love, then you ain't got to worry. You ain't got to worry. That's the reason that when people, if you, you know, we ain't got no membership, but we know who come, who belong here, whatever. And if you belong here, you ain't, you ain't got to be coming to church all the time for me to treat you just like I do the folks that come to church. I say, I love you. I love you. I, I, ain't, I If you love somebody, ain't going to be no different between them. You ain't got to act like it or nothing like that. If you love them, ain't no difference. I love you. I love you. I know Jeremy, uh, he, he had his way in doing stuff like that. And so, you know, I, how children do. I, do this, I did it. You did it. Everything. Children come and go. They lose their mind for a while. Then they come on back. They lose their mind for a while. And they come on back. But one of these times when he came on back, he told me, he said, Daddy. He said, why, 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 did, you, why did you keep, why, why, why did you pick, pick the phone up? I could call him and everything. The phone just rang, 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 rang. He said, why you picked the phone up? I said, because I love you. Because I love you. But you see, when I operate out of this area, this, this, is, not, this is not dependable. God told me, if, he, if I change your thinking, I change your life. Yeah. If you're walking around thinking that you're smart enough or that you got enough willpower, that what you feel, well, I just feel like I just feel you done made some of the most foolish decisions in the world because of how you felt. I just feel feelings is just like a thermometer, just keep living, it'll change. The temperature will change if you don't like the weather today, just keep getting up and going. It'll, it'll come a day. Who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? What is the truth? The truth is, is that I cannot trust me. Paul says in Philippians, the uh, third chapter, he said, we are not as those that have confidence in the flesh. Yeah. This is the flesh right here. That's the reason it's so hard for smart folks to get this. They can't get past this right here. I can't get past about how many degrees I got. I can't get past about how big my house is. I can't get past, man, just how well that I've done. And you know, my grandfather was this right here. And then, this, they got to tell you about how this, my, this. He said, give me Philippians 3. 
I'm busting out of this, though. Rick James, it wasn't none of Isaiah. It's Rick James. Said, I'm busting out of here, seven. Well, I like that song. We're busting out. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, this right here. But you know what, y'all? I didn't know what had me. I knew I was saved. But what the church folk would tell me, Ray, is, is that when I start, when, when that start not working, well, you know, you need to come back to the altar. You probably need to get dipped again. You probably need to get, some, get go in the water again. See, you get, it's just like uh, uh, you got problems and you won't go on, take it to the people who, who made it. See, you, you trying to go the cheap way and you going shade tree over there and everything. You don't want to pay, but you know what? Don't nobody know it like the manufacturer. They know how it's supposed to work. Yeah. And they know what to make it work. And so I got to come back to God. Mm. I got to come to the word rightly divided mm. in order for God to show me how these things work. Mm. How does it work? Pa Paul says in, in the second verse, he says, you beware of dogs. Let me say this right here. I ain't got it twisted. I ain't got it twisted. 99% of folks in the church don't care how you live. I ain't got it twisted. I said that. And I stand on it. Ain't no baby. I'm about 70 years old. I've been in the church since 1980. I've seen the tricks. Now I understand it. Now I don't have to get mad at you. Because I understand you messed up. See, messed up people mess up folks. How you going to put me on the right path and you messed up? <laughs> Only thing you can do is just mess me up with you. And that's what Jesus said to the Pharisees. He said, you make them twice the devil that you are. So I ain't got, I don't have it twisted. And I know how to be alone. I know how to be alone. I count my money better when I'm by myself. I do. I can take care of my business better when I'm by myself. I don't need nobody to hold crowd around me while I'm doing this, baby. I let you know what I want you to know. You see? So he said, beware of dogs. Beware of the concession. They messed up and they're trying to mess you up. Which worship, he said, for we are the circumcision. See, they playing. Which worship God. How? Right here. This is how we worship God. Remember Jesus told a woman that was at the well? So woman, you worship, you know not what. You just got a whole lot of mess going on. Because she said, well, you know, we heard that we, we, that we know y'all don't have nothing to do with us because we worship him. Y'all said Jerusalem is a place to worship. He, Jesus said, you know, she thought she was trying to impress Jesus. You ever, you ever been around folks that think they're telling you something you don't, you know? He said, woman, you worship, you know not what. He said, a time coming for now is when they that worship God didn't say should. He said must worship him. In spirit, you can't worship God here, Lady Deborah, in your mind, and in your will, and in your emotion. I didn't plan it that way. I like music and stuff like that. But we come to 18 years, God, ain't, we ain't got nothing. We ain't got, no, we ain't got a drum or guitar or nothing. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I ain't Church of Christ. I ain't saying it's a sin or nothing wrong with, with having it and everything. But you know what? What God has done for us, he done moved all the distractions. I would like to have some assistant ministers and stuff and stuff where I don't have to preach all the time and you know, da 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 I ain't got none of them. Because what they want to do is they want to get up and, and just get up and preach. They just want to get up and do that foolishness. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to let nobody loose on y'all that don't know what they're doing. I'll train you. I will teach you. I'll instruct you. But you're not going to get up in it. Uh -uh. 
in this area right here, we come too far. Yeah. Me and my wife have sacrificed too much. Yeah. Time, money, and whatever. We've given our life to this. Yeah. We have. Yeah. I'm not finna no. And then the thing about it is, I love you. Yeah. I was telling Vanna Jr. we talking about the other day. I said, but one, one thing Vanna Jr. knew and he agreed with me. When they were coming up, Fred, <laughs> I'd fight a bad about it. I fight a bad about man. Don't come telling me nothing about Jesus, the church, nothing. I'm not kidding. Don't, I don't want to hear it. Because the Bible said that they that won't take care of their own is worse than an infidel. Yes. Yes. It's worse than an infidel. Yes. It's worse than an infidel. And if you don't respect mine, you don't respect me. Yeah. Ain't no such thing as you respect me, but you don't respect my wife. No, it, it don't go like that. If you don't respect my wife, you don't respect me. He says, for we are the circumcision which worship in the spirit and rejoice mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. You go to church, you only, they talk about everything but Jesus. You don't even hear Jesus' in name. I was in church one day and Lady Deborah told me, I told you women see more and hear more than men do it, everything. She said, they ain't called Jesus' name one time. <laughs> see, I can't talk in church because I be just talking everything. They got a way of talking like a ventriloquist. Don't even move their mouth. <laughs> That was Fred. That was it. They ain't called Jesus name one time. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I hadn't even paid no attention. But we rejoice in Christ Jesus. Why is that? Because we accept the fact that we didn't meet him out here. Yeah. We met him right here. That if it had not been yeah. for the Lord, huh, we would be lost. It, it was him, his spirit, him dying on the cross, him shedding his blood, him going back to the Father, and the Father sending the Holy Ghost, and his spirit living within us. Uh, I didn't get to the scripture over there in 1 Corinthians, but he said that he is our wisdom. He is our wisdom. You don't have to be foolish no more. You don't have to be foolish. If you let the spirit of God lead you, his wisdom, you'll make wise decisions. But it's not you making them. Pa pa Paul says that, that I'm crucified with Christ. Yet I live. But not me. But Christ lives in me. I say all the time, Robert, that, 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 that uh, uh, the Lord make me, he make me look like I got a whole lot of sense. And that's all right. As long as I don't start bleeding. As long as I don't start taking credit for what he's doing in my life. And I started thinking, boy, you know what? I don't come a long way. I'm sure, boy, I, I wasn't no, but I'm a fine fellow now. What I used to do, I'll do it today. Because it ain't me. It's Christ that lives within me. And if I ever start walking in me, then me will show up. And that's when I go, ooh, I, 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 I thought I wouldn't do that. I, I thought, no, you, you deceived. Yourself. And that's when Paul said, You foolish. Your only hope is walking in the Spirit. Yeah. But you have reverted back to this right here. And why is that tango? Because this is the credit zone, this is the attention zone. Folk know they ain't getting nothing at their church, but they won't leave their church and come over here and be taught because they don't want to lose their title. Y'all glad y'all got a pastor that just tell it just like a T.I. Yeah. yeah, right. Ain't got the whisper and wait out the service and tell you. <laughs> Jesus said, this is what I did. When they came to get him, he told them, Vandal Jr., he said, well, you come to me at night like these and everything? He said, what I did, they said, I taught openly. I didn't do it in no corner. You coming, coming like I'm sneaking. You see? He says, we, are, we rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence. Mm. In order for my life to skyrocket, in order for me to go from mediocre to abundant life, yeah. my mind got to change. Mm -hmm. 
That's when we talk about Sunday. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who though he were equal with God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation. He denied in order that he could accomplish what God sent him as the second Adam. The first Adam decided that he wanted to operate in this area right here. He told him, he said, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I'm taking care of you. I'm leading you. I'm guiding you. You're happy every day. We're talking every day. You ain't having no problem with your wife. You ain't having no problems at all. But the first Adam made a decision to operate within himself. The second Adam says, I only do what my father said. He says now, he says, there's only 12 hours. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, because night cometh and no man shall be able to work. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the enemy. You see, Lady Deborah, when Adam failed, the first Adam, this area right here became blocked. Man no longer have a choice. We have a choice. God saved us. We have a choice today whether we're going to walk in the spirit cricket or whether we're going to walk in the flesh. But when Adam failed, this area right here was blocked, and so the whole world was lost. Nobody could walk in the spirit. What would happen is, is that when God wanted to get a message out, the spirit of God would come upon them. It wasn't within them. The spirit of God would come upon Samson at times, and he was able to take the gates and walk off with them. The spirit of God would come upon Samuel, and they would prophesy. But now, since the second Adam came, and he destroyed, it's in Ephesians, the second chapter, he destroyed the works of, of, he took the law and the ordinances and commandments that were against us, and they nailed them to the cross. And so now, we that were dead, Ephesians, the second chapter, we that were dead in our trespasses and sin, have he quickened together. You see, that's the reason Paul said we're not those that have confidence in the flesh, but we worship Jesus Christ because, you see, he quickened us together with Christ. If Christ hadn't got up, we couldn't get up. But since he got up and we place our faith in the grace, in his gift that he gave, we don't, none of us deserve him going to the cross and dying for us. But when I put my faith in his love and in his grace, then he quickens or makes me to lie together. I'm preaching right now. Together with him. He lifts me. He lifts me. Y'all know when, 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 I first, when we first started and everything, I used to tell y'all all the time, you know, they talking about uh, how I'm blessed now. What they going to do when the helicopter falls? Can't you see the blessings? Yeah. Just, man, this stuff here, this stuff here, what he's teaching us, man, man, we can, life on a higher level. Yeah. Just, just walk, walk in and, and, and giving you disdain. For, okay, let me give you a good example. Okay. Who in here want to go back to when you were broke, broke? Yeah. Nobody do it. Nobody. When they had the Great Depression, you had folks jumping out of windows. Now, I hope there ain't none of y'all like that. But they couldn't ever, and they, they couldn't stand the idea that I'm going to have to go back to living like that. Now that God has shown us where real life is. See, this is a mirage. This is a mirage here. This is a mirage. You know what this is full of? This is full of fake friends. Hmm? You ever had any of them? As huh? long as you had what they wanted and, 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 and what they needed. Our frat brother could have used this real good. Oh, yes. Oh, that's good a guy as you ever want to meet. But he loved people. But he was surrounded by fake folk. Surround, surrounded by people who take it in. I'd have done it. I've done it. 
I, I used to feed a whole room full of folk. I did. Didn't the robber. We go to the convention and everything like that, it's on me. Hmm? I, I guess I taught my children like that. Cause one time when Vanda Jr. went to Nashville, you know, when you're taking your child off, he going to camp, uh, whatever and everything, you know. I'm a lawyer. I'm going to make sure he got everything that he need. We stayed up there about three days. I left him so, so much money and all that. When I came back to get him, though. When I came back to get him, a poor child, he was washing his clothes on his hand. I'm like, what happened? He said, Daddy. He said, after you left, he said, I told him, say, y'all can't spend no money. I got you. I think that's enough. Clap your hands for me. Yeah.